Hi grade 3! Welcome back to our online class. Our lesson for today is about sound. In this lesson, we're going to find out how are sounds produced? What are the uses of sound? How can we produce sounds using different objects? And last, what are the different types of sound? Now let us know how sounds are produced. Here's a video presentation about it. Cover your eyes for a moment and just listen. What do you hear? I hear my chemistry set bubbling and squeaks. Is that you? Sounds are all around us all the time. There are so many of them and we call sounds by a lot of different names. Like if a sound is really loud and kind of unpleasant, like when there's a lot of traffic going by, we sometimes call it noise. And if a sound is made by an instrument like a piano or a ukulele, we call it a note. And we call lots of notes together music. And some words are kind of like the sounds themselves. Like when fireworks go boom, popcorn pops, and bells go ding-a-ling. It doesn't matter what makes a sound though. All sounds are made the same way through vibrations. When something vibrates, it moves back and forth really fast. So fast, in fact, that our eyes often can't see it moving. But other parts of our body can sense vibrations. And I bet you know what parts those are. That's right, our ears. So how does sound get from, say, a bell to our ears? The air all around us is made of tiny particles, and these particles are what carry sound. We can use marbles to demonstrate the teeny tiny particles that make up the air. Let's see how. If we put a few marbles together so they're touching, then roll another marble so that it crashes into them, the group of marbles will move. That's kind of what happens with sound. When we ring a bell, we cause the metal that makes up the bell to vibrate really fast back and forth. And the vibration of the bell also shakes up the particles that make up the air around it and makes them vibrate. Then those particles run into the air particles next to them and so on. You can also think about it like dominoes, with the vibration getting passed along from one bunch of particles in the air to the next. We call this path of vibration a wave. Now, how do we hear those vibrations? If we could look deep inside our ears, we'd see a special little part that kind of looks like the top of a drum. When sound waves make it all the way to and into our ears, they make this part of our ear vibrate. The vibrations keep going, moving even deeper into our ear until they finally get to the spot that sends a message to our brain. And that message says, hey, we're hearing something. So it means sounds are produced by objects that vibrate. Now who's ready to make some vibrations? We can make a kind of musical instrument that will help us to see the vibrations that we make. Just get your empty can and your rubber band. Just stretch the rubber band on the can just like this and Pluck the rubber band gently, just like a guitar. Does it make a sound? It sure does. And if we look very, very closely, we can see that the rubber band is moving back and forth. When we pull on the rubber band and let it go, we're causing it to vibrate. These vibrations travel into the air, making the air particles move through the air to our ears in a sound wave. When we speak or sing, our vocal cords vibrate and produce sounds unique to us. The strings of the violin produce sounds when they vibrate. Now let us have the uses of sound. Sounds can be used in many ways. First, we use sounds to warn people of danger. Sirens and fire alarms produce sounds to warn us of emergencies or danger.
Sounds are also used to communicate with one another. When we speak, we use sounds to communicate and share our thoughts and information with others. Animals like birds and whales seem to attract mating partners. They also use sounds to warn other animals of danger. And last is to entertain people. We produce sounds when we sing or play musical instruments. These sounds make music which entertains us. There are many ways to produce sounds. We can use musical instruments as well as other objects around us to produce sounds. For example, we can produce sounds when we are hitting something. Next, when we are plucking the strings of the guitar. Also, when we are blowing air into a whistle. Last, popping and shaking a bag of chips. Now, let's explore. Look around your room, pick up some objects, and try to produce sounds with them. Okay, go! These are your possible answers. First, heating the sides of a tin can. Of course, it will produce sound, right? Next, clinking coins together. And pouring water from a pitcher to a glass. So, do you have the same answer? Okay, very good. Now let's proceed to the family activity. Pause this video for a while and do the family activity entitled Different Objects, Different Sounds. Are you ready? Okay, go! Did you enjoy the family activity? Bravo, Kado! Now, let us proceed to the different types of sound. Sounds can be loud, like the boom from a plane taking off, and can be soft as the sound of a person's whisper. Okay, let us have a short activity about loud sound and soft sound. So, I'll be flashing pictures and then you're going to identify if it has a loud sound or a soft sound. So, are you ready? Alright, let us proceed. First, squeaking mouse. Your answer is? Very good! Next one? A racing car. Very good! Next, how about a snake? Very good! It has a soft sound. 
this a fish. Very good. Shot sound. Now let us have the difference between the high pitched sound and the low pitched sound. When we say high pitched, its example is a ding a ling of a triangle. And when we say low pitched, it's the boom. So again, let us have a short activity about high pitch sound and low pitch sound. Again, I'm going to show you pictures of objects and then you're going to identify if it has a high pitch sound or a low pitch sound. Ready? Okay. First is the tweeting of a bird. Very good. Next one, we have a Very good. Next one, how about a roaring lion? Very good. But not the least, how about a bell? Okay, your answer is high pitch. Very good. And because of that, you deserve a round of applause. And that's it. Let's have a quick glance of our lesson for today. Again, we have here sound. And then sound is being produced by musical instruments. And it is also used to communicate, to warn of danger, and for entertainment. Sounds are also produced when objects are vibrating, which make the air around them vibrate. Sounds can also be loud, soft, high pitch, and low pitched. Now get your science 3B book, open it on page 98, and answer self check. Again, this is Teacher Ivy Cedivilla. Thank you for watching. God bless you and stay safe.